Hello, this is Paul Bergen from the Mars Hill blog. That uh, can be found at www.paulbergin.blogspot.co.uk. I'm continuing a series of vlogs of political heroes of mine who I think helped change society for the better. And this one's about Hal Wilson. I have a, actually um, a personal recollection of him. It was in around August 1988, and I was on holiday with my family in the Isles of Scilly. It was a month before my 13th birthday, and we are in the shop at, at, on Hugh Town, uh, on St Mary's, and my dad then said, quick, outside, Hal Wilson uh, is there. And I knew of Hal Wilson as a former uh, British Prime Minister and Labour leader. What happened? In the distance, you could see Wilson with his wife. Their backs were to us, they were talking to a local. And you could see the Wilson motifs, not least, even though his backs to us, a uh, pipe in his hand. I think there was a Labrador of them, but he definitely had the pipe. And it was it was quite a surprise, really. Um, and I, I think it partly developed an interest because I'd actually seen him. He was, I think, without doubt, one of the best British Prime Ministers we've had since the war. He was born in 1916 uh, in Yorkshire. He had a grammar school education and managed to get a place at Oxford. He was involved in politics, but only on a peripheral level. Uh, I think a nominal member of what was the Liberal Party before joining Labour. He became an academic. He was not involved in the interesting politics of Oxford in the late 30s like his future political adversary Sir Edward Heath and his future cabinet ministers Tony Crossland, Roy Jenkins and Dennis Healy. But he um, was pretty much someone who was far greater successful than they were later on. And it started in 1940 when William Beveridge uh, asked him to come to Whitehall uh, as a civil servant. Uh, I think it was at the Ministry of Labour or the Ministry of Works, I don't know which. And I do apologise, I should have checked beforehand. The, these talks are unscripted. But in... The cause of which he, he he tended to impress a number of civil servants and labour politicians. He did get develop an interest in labour politics to the extent that he stood for Parliament in forty five and won a seat in a forty five landslide, representing Ormskirk from nineteen forty five to nineteen fifty, and then Highton Liverpool from nineteen fifty to nineteen eighty three. He rose through the ranks quickly. Attlee, uh, the Prime Minister at the time, respected good ability tremendously and Wilson was very highly intelligent and very able. He was a minister almost immediately in becoming an MP and two years later he became a cabinet minister in 1947 as president of the Board of Trade at the age of 31, the youngest cabinet minister of the 20th century and no one since has reached cabinet level at that young an age, at just 31. He made a name, good name for himself as a middle-ranking cabinet minister, but in 1951 he resigned over prescription charges on uh, dentistry by the then-Chancellor Hugh Gateskill, and he and Narin Bevan uh, resigned from the cabinet. And he had a reputation of being on the left of the party, but that was a misnomer. Wilson was a pragmatist, and he worked with how he was politically dependent on the issue, and he was keen to see the best of both sides and work the best of both sides, but he was not hard left, which as later he showed he did not have a respect particular respect for, nor was he very much to the right of the party um, in terms of the Gateskillite faction, which 
uh, he certainly was not. Or later on, you know, with the, he was hardly what in the same league as Tony Crossland, Roy Jenkins, or too respectful of that. The kind of right wing he did respect was perhaps more along the lines of his successor James Callahan, who was perhaps um, what you would call as blue labour, blue collar right wing labour. But he did give both wings of the party a good voice, and Roy Jenkins and Tony Benn were given enough of a voice in the later period of his premiership than perhaps others would have given, or his Labour leadership, I mean, sorry, than others would have given credit for. Wilson rose through the ranks quickly. He, he in uh, opposition, he was Shadow, Cab- Ch- Shadow Chancellor and then Shadow Foreign Secretary under Hugh Gateskill. The two men did not get along, and Wilson did stand against Gateskill in 1960, although no, he did not win. But in 1963, Gateskill died after a short illness, and Wilson became elect Labour leader on the second ballot. He hit the ground running. He captured the imagination of the people at the time, perhaps in the same way as Tony Blair did in the 90s, and to a certain extent Jeremy Corbyn now. And he talked about the white heat of technology. The Labour Party is moving into the 1960s, and a contrast with Hal Macmillan, who is clearly of the Edwardian age, could not be more stark. But Labour only won with a narrow majority in October 64. They got a large majority in 66, but it was never quite... um, The Conservatives were more of a robust opposition than perhaps one would give credit for. But things started to unravel fairly soon after uh, the landslide in uh, the heavy majority in 66. The pound was devalued, it had to be devalued in 67. It should have been devalued the moment Labour came to government in 64. Tony Crossland, who was an economics minister, argued for devaluation. Um, Wilson and Callaghan kept it away until the last possible moment. If they had called devaluation as soon as it came to power, it could have been very risky, but they could have rightly blamed the Conservatives and Maudlin's economic handling or uh, in as Chancellor of the Exchequer. But Wilson, Callaghan resigned as Chancellor over devaluation, but Wilson made choice to stay in the Cabinet. He got him and Roy Jenkins to swap jobs. This stroke genius, I regard Roy Jenkins as one of the best Chancellors of the Exchequer the UK has had. And Britain turned around tremendously. So by 1970, Wilson felt confident enough to call that general election where he could have waited another uh, year. But there were other problems in the meantime. Northern Ireland, the troubles in Northern Ireland had begun. Uh, Wilson and Jenkins buckled under, uh, away from supporting Barbara Castle on in place of strife over moderate union reform, which meant that um, years later, when Thatcher was able to bring in more draconian message, uh, more draconian um, measures against it, and. Wilson remained le- leader of the Labour Party in the early 70s, but he had to contend with the rise of the far left, growing slowly but surely in the constituency parties and within uh, some of the trade union movements. He had to contend with the issue of Europe. He tried to get Britain to join the EC in 67. It failed because of de Gaulle's veto. Heath brought it in, uh, Britain into Europe, The Labour Party was dead against it as a whole, except for a number on the right led by Roy Jenkins. And Roy Jenkins, being the deputy leader at the time, led 68 other Labour MPs into rebellion against Labour's measures. When Ben brought in a referendum idea, Jenkins resigned. When that referendum idea was ratified by the Shadow Cabinet and the NEC. But things went badly for the Heath government and after... The oil prices hike in a three-day week, and then a miners' strike. He rashly called a general election on the 
platform of who governs Britain. Wilson uh, did not expect to win. He thought he would quietly resign after uh, this election. But there was no majority. It was uh, the first hung parliament since the Second World War. And Wilson uh, had four seats ahead of the Conservatives. Conservatives couldn't form a coalition. Wilson refused to form a coalition with the government. was able to form a minority government and then called a general election for later that year. So that was one year since the war. We had two general elections, same year, one in February, one in October. It was a gamble and it paid off. Another gamble Wilson uh, did was he called a referendum on the EC. Unlike, Calla uh, sorry, unlike Cameron in 2016, Wilson took his time. And he made sure he managed to make sure the result was pulled off at the time when it was most likely to vote for remaining in the EEC. He also kept a back seat in distance. It was one of his greatest successes. Alongside the success of the Open University in 1969, which has given many the chance of a higher education that they perhaps wouldn't have had, and the keeping Britain out of the Vietnam War, even down to a token pre refusing a token presence, which infuriated the Americans, but perhaps protected Britain internationally and protected many British lives. And those are reasons why Wilson's one of my political heroes and how I think he changed society for the better. He resigned suddenly and unexpectedly in 1976, and many have asked why. I think he saw... There are two reasons, I think, why he resigned. One, he had the very, he saw what the very early signs of the Alzheimer's that he had in his last years, and he recognised those signs for what they were and felt it was best to leave before others noticed them. And secondly, he had been leader for 13 years. He had fought... Uh, five general elections, and even though he had won four of them, or managed to get into power with four of them, he was tired. He was tired and exhausted. And, you know, very, very few Prime Ministers get to leave at a time of their own choosing. And Wilson succeeded. He remained a backbench MP for some years afterwards. He entered the Lords in 1983, but pretty much after the mid-1980s because of his illness, he no longer um, be, he was no longer a voice in contemporary British politics, and he died in 1995, a year after Blair became leader of the Labour Party, and very likely in knowing of that fact. And many regard Wilson as an opportunist. Uh, I personally think that whilst he that is a fair charge. He also kept the Labour Party together. He kept Britain out of Vietnam. He increased opportunity for all. He gave Britain confidence in the 60s in a way some argue Thatcher gave confidence to some sections of British society in the early 80s. And Wilson has become an unsung hero. And I hope it has the balance has been redressed over time. I hope it continues to do so. Thank you very much.